Hi everyone, this is our channel, Meet the Real Story. Please, like, share and subscribe. My name is Ricardo. Though I am a 21-year-old, my body is the size of a 10-year-old boy because I was born with a disease called Prader-Willi Syndrome, PWS, which stunted my body growth while allowing my mind to continue developing. Most people would consider PWS to be a curse, but it was a gift for Dad and me because we took advantage of this situation. My story starts when Dad's company accused him of embezzlement and fired him. The scandal and shame of this incident kept him from getting any other type of work, so we left our country to start a new life elsewhere. Dad was still unable to get a job because his old company always gave him bad references when called by prospective new employers. Dad was worried about our future, so he improvised and came up with a scheme to turn me into the goose that laid the golden egg. You see, children always bullied me due to my small body size. Luckily, my mature mind helped me avoid fights most of the time. One day, Dad asked me if I wanted to become famous, and I said, sure. He told me that we needed a way to gain people's sympathy, and he explained his plan. We went to the garage and found some old torn clothes that he asked me to wear. Then he poured dirty water on me. Then he made a recording of me crying and explaining that I had been beaten by some bullies in our neighborhood. After we finished making our sympathy garnering video, he applauded my performance and posted it to the internet to see what reaction we would get. The next day, our video went viral and I became an instant celebrity. All the news agencies gave the video broad coverage, and I began receiving sympathetic phone calls and donations from around the world. Several international schools offered me free scholarships at their schools, and I managed to amass a good size of money from all the donations, and for a moment, I thought our days of poverty were finally over. Unfortunately, the authorities investigated my background and found that I was 21 years old and not really a kid at all. Then, all my fortunes reversed themselves, and the police came after me for fraud. I am speaking to you now from a hotel room as I hide from the police. I have enough money to head to another country, preferably one that has no extradition treaty with my country. I have enough money to live comfortably without needing to work for the rest of my life. So, on balance, I don't have any regrets about what I've done. Hey everyone, my name is Gwen. My story is different from anything you've ever heard before in your life. We all have grandparents, and we all love them very much. When they die, they leave an empty space in our hearts. It's never easy. My grandpa died a year ago. Before he died, he left me an old weird-looking chest, which I never thought to open before, until today. I opened the chest, but all I found in it were two pieces of paper. One of them had only two words, Grandpa's house, and the other had a map drawn on it. I thought for a while, then I decided to go to my Grandpa's old house and check things out. So, I went to the house. As I took out the key to open the door, the door opened wide. There was no one else there. I was scared, but I was curious to find out more about the map. So I went in. As soon as I got inside, the door slammed shut behind me. I was shocked and scared, but I wasn't going to back out now. The house looked so creepy and eerie, like it was abandoned for a hundred years. And it felt so cold. Cold, like standing on ice. I opened the map in my hands and looked around. It showed the inside of the house. I followed the path till I reached a door. When I stood in front of it, it opened slowly on its own. Terrified, I took two steps back, but I glimpsed a shadow inside, so I moved forward. I stepped in, but with nothing under my feet, I fell, rolling over down the stairs. It wasn't a room. It was the basement. I tried to get up, but there was something on my legs. Of course, it was too dark to see what it was. Every time I take it off, it falls back again. I looked for my phone, but it wasn't in my pocket. Oddly enough, when I looked again, it was there. I took it out, and I turned on the flashlight. 
and there was my surprise. On my legs was the bony arm of a skeleton. I kicked it away and stood up quick. I lit around the room with my phone, but it was full of skeletons all over. Of course, no need to tell you I was scared the heck out of my wits. What happened next was beyond the understanding of an average person. The eyes of one of the skeletons turned bright red, and they were staring right at me. My feet started moving backwards automatically, and I found two bony hands clasping my neck. I freaked out. But then, suddenly, all the skeletons moved and stood in two lines, clearing a path for me. The map in my hand was glowing and indicating a place in the room. I moved towards it, slowly, as my knees buckled together. There was a huge chest. When I opened it, I found a ton load of money. Strangely enough, all the skeletons had disappeared, and the furniture in the room was floating around the air. I got scared, and I ran for it. But I came to the stairs, and I found the door locked. It wouldn't open. The skeletons appeared around me once again, and they were pulling me off the stairs. I soared through the air and landed on the chest. Then I was out cold. When I came to, I found myself inside the chest, like it was a coffin of some sort, and I was lying inside, feeling numb all over. I could see the sky, but it was cloudy. I felt like I was being buried. Then I heard a voice. It said, Welcome to your grandpa's treasure. This is what happens to people like me. Dumb people like me who follow a stupid map to look for their grandpa's worthless treasure. They'll tell you their stories from their graves. Hey, my name is Rachel. In high school, the homecoming dance was coming up. I happened to confine that I had a crush on a popular guy to another girl in my class. Unbeknownst to me, they were very, very good friends. And this girl offered to put in a good word for me. The next day she told me my crush would totally say yes if I asked him. So in between periods, I found my crush in the hallway, asked him to the homecoming dance, and he said yes. Well, homecoming is on Saturday. Today is Thursday. My crush, his friend, and I, we went to lunch together and I offered to pay in the hopes that this will make them like me even more. And yes, I was that bad. They tell me they want two bags of chips, burgers, fries, and two small cartons of chocolate milk? No problem. I go to the cafeteria and get those items like a boss. For some reason, I decided to jog over to them, even though that really only shaves off like, what, 10 minutes from my trip? But I still did it. I had two bags of chips in my mouth, one in my hand with a burger and fries, the other hand with two cartons of chocolate milk. They are sitting in the common area. The common area is carpeted, parallel to the cafeteria which had a tile floor. These rooms are separated by a relatively small metal line on the floor. And as I meet that line, my left foot catches on the metal. No problem, I have another foot. I will just swing that foot forward real quick and save this. But no, the other foot also catches. As I fall straight forward, I try to catch myself with my hands. Well, one hand had the chocolate milk in it, which just burst out, sending chocolate milk in every single direction. My other hand didn't help me either. It slipped on the burger in the bag and the fries go all over the place. The last thing to break my fall was actually my own face. The face with two bags of potato chips in my mouth. You know those jokes about chips bags being full of air? Well, they're actually true. As my face collided with the ground, both the bags of chips exploded at the same exact time and it sounded like a gunshot. Somehow one of my shoes just flew off. I tried to melt into the ground and fade out of existence for a moment and this happened at the meeting point of the common room and the cafeteria. So everyone in both rooms either saw or heard this fiasco and looked over. About a hundred students. It's deadly silent for a couple of seconds and then comes the laughter. And dear god the laughter. It was like a jet engine. Every person there was laughing the hardest they have ever laughed in their whole lives. 
I even saw the janitor doubled over laughing, bracing himself for the mop handle. A teacher was trying to walk over to help me, but she stopped every couple of feet to use her whole body to laugh at me. All of this happens not 10 feet away from the table in which my crush and his friends were sitting. Everyone is having a great laugh, but my crush has the greatest laugh of all. He has fallen to the ground, with one hand bracing himself on his knees, the other hand is clutched at his ribs as he laughs so hard that no sound comes out. He was wheezing like a dolphin. There is no recovery from this. I walk to the bathroom to clean myself up. The teacher could only manage to hand me my shoe along the way and continue laughing. In the bathroom, the laughter did not die at all for what seemed like a lifetime. When the bell rang, I was still in the bathroom and people were still laughing. While I spent the whole day wallowing in easily the most embarrassing moment of my life, I thought, well, maybe, maybe I'm just a funny girl and he will like it. The next morning, I see my crush before class and he walks up to me and he says, So homecoming is tomorrow. Eager not to speak about the shit show that happened yesterday, I just excitedly said, Yes, yes it is. And then he delivers a crisp and says, um, so this girl that I actually like asked me to go to the dance with her, so I think I'm gonna go. To which I replied, um, ah, yeah, that makes sense. I totally did not go in the bathroom and cry after that. Anyways, my crush said he will go to homecoming with me. The day before, I tripped with his lunch and face planted into a pool of random ingredients in front of the entire class. My crush did not go to the homecoming dance with me.